one moment. Okay, we are live. This is your host, Christopher Decker. Now, for Eureka Moments Only, we normally are using our studio here at uh, the Eureka Building in Irvine, California. But as you know, we've we've embraced virtual and uh, Eureka Moments Only show. We share the pivots, the breakthroughs, the the moments, those Eureka moments that change our lives, change our businesses, shape who we are, shape our communities. Today, we have Katrina on the show. Thank you. She's the CEO of Blitz Marketing and the founder of Embrace Your Alpha, Katrina. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. I'm uh, incredibly honored to be able to share parts of my journey um, and connect with more humans at this time when there's so much uncertainty. It's so beautiful to be able to connect with people and share and collaborate and connect. Um, a bit about me, I own a digital marketing agency, as well as on the side, my passion project is helping empower women to embrace their alpha. And that doesn't mean to be dominant, doesn't, dom dominant, doesn't mean to be aggressive. It just means to embrace your higher um, calling and what you're passionate about. I'm going to tighten in the frame a little bit there. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> If anybody comments that you want it either way, I'll, I'll be happy to change it. Katrina, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, I've got the Eureka mug also. I love it. The I'll shirt, be fine. The mug. Everything. You're completely swagged out. You have the sign in the background. You have everything going for you. That's that's the whole thing. It's it's Eureka moments only, and really really excited to be speaking with you today because I. I we, we were talking offline and you're sharing a little bit about uh, your your personal development journey. And today's episode's about pivot or persevere. So I was wondering if you could share some of your story um, and some of those eureka moments. Of course. So I started my career actually in politics. Um, I worked for a few cabinet ministers as well as the mayor at the time, who is controversial at best. Um, and during that process, I spent about seven years in it, in the thick of things. I was in, I was promoted eight times in the span of two years and then um, just kept growing. Um, and I didn't realize it as I was going, I was losing parts of my identity. I was forking it over for the purpose of someone else. Um, and I was starting to question a lot of my engagement and what I was doing with my life and starting to look inwards and be like, is this really who I define myself as? And during that process, I had the beautiful opportunity to basically run away to a different city um, and reignite who I was as a person. And I thought that was a phenomenal opportunity, so I ran with it. Um, I moved away from Ontario to BC and I became a yoga instructor for a little bit. Completely different life as a whole, um, it felt very different. And I realized how much I didn't actually have an identity as a person. I had a career. I had something that I could use every time I shook someone's hand that validated me. But as a mm -hmm. person, I didn't have anything that I felt was valuable until I took that moment of just complete calm and complete space where my career and my job didn't define me. It couldn't. It didn't have the same weight as what I was doing prior. Um, and during that process, I mentally spiraled so much and I had so many low moments of trying to figure it all out. And then I realized that the, this is like the journey of life. It's the process that we're supposed to experience. So I started immersing myself in so much personal development, going to Tony Robbins, UPW, going all over the world to everything that I could possibly do from tech conferences in Amsterdam, um, TNW. Fantastic, but if no one's been, like, please go. Um, and it revolutionized what I was passionate about, and I found digital marketing in that. So that was a little bit of my journey so far. Okay, so there, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> there there's politics. There's there's moving, you know, huge culture shift changes. There's uh, – we were actually – so fun fact is that we were actually at that same – Tony Robbins, UP Unleash the Power Within event in San Jose. Mm -hmm. And like my, my life changed that, that weekend. I was okay. not the same person that walked out of that room. 
and and your t and TNW is the event that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. It's called the so, Next Web Conference, and it's nice like every single data hacker to thought provoking leader to disruptive tech was there to communicate. So, of these, so the, speaking of the topic of pivot or persevere, mm -hmm. right? You're in digital marketing. This is something you're passionate about. Absolutely. You're you're on emergency calls with your clients. I'm just making this up. This isn't true. You're on emergency <laughs> calls with your clients. They're freaking out. They're not they're not sure whether they need to completely change their direction or if they need to stick it through or what to say or how to do it or what's going on. So what what, what are they going to do? What 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 so do we need to do? is to breathe, <laughs> take okay. a moment and reevaluate and take a breath because no matter what you do, if you do it from a state of frenzy, you're not going to be able to accomplish anything. So taking that moment and looking at all of the pieces on your chessboard, understanding that your business is a chessboard and you have a few moves to make in order to conquer. And in order to do that, you have to be really cognizant of what's in front of you. You have to know the pieces that are in your arsenal. So take inventory. Take a moment and understand what's bleeding right now that you can't control and you can't change. Cut them. Next, take a look at what you like, what you're not willing to forego and you're not willing to change because you really do love it. Can you put a pause to that right now because your client base isn't going to be coming into your brick and mortar store or understanding what your opportunities are? If you are already online, engaging with that, but making sure that you're supporting your community. This is the perfect time to be the leader, to be that thought evoking positive framework that people can look to for support rather than that aggressive person who's, who's going to sell them even though they, they don't have the opportunity to be able to buy from you. Um, I implore or like ask all business owners to take that moment to have empathy and look at it from the perspective of their ideal client. Put yourself in their shoes. What do they need from you? And taking a, look at, taking a look at that and then providing that solution. People need solutions right now. And if you're a solution-oriented business, provide the solution for the people that need it. That's as simple as I can put it. And then within the vein of marketing, we have so many opportunities to be able to utilize that solution and showcase it. Marketing is your opportunity to um, really pump it out to the world, but you have to have something of value that you're pumping out. I'm going to check the feed to see if we have Great. any questions here. You're you're speaking about a lot a lot of important things right now, which is focusing on where you can meet people with their needs. Mm -hmm. So, tell me more about that. As a as a as a company, how can we meet people's needs By versus asking them what they need? Asking okay, so maybe it's place. as simple as asking them. So, how do we mm -hmm. ask them? You can ask them through your social media pages. You can ask them through, well, specifically Instagram lives. People are loving the concept of coming online together at the same time because they're lacking that community interaction. The next thing right. is Facebook posts, survey posts, email automations to all of your followers that are truly catered. Like don't send out a mass email that has no emotional um, trigger points in it because you want to emotionally connect to your people. Like they support you, it's time for you to support them. Um, and so sending out a content to your email list and really garnering that respect from them for being available to them will really right. set you up from everyone. Okay, so there's so communication, creating mm -hmm. that that dialogue, right? Um okay, so How, how, how have you learned how to most effectively create that dialogue with your customers and your community? Um, you know, what are some tips, people that might be just starting businesses, right? We have a lot of new entrepreneurs watching this that don't have, you know, hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of people in an email list and maybe just started, you know, j just started. And now they're seeing companies like New Balance that are, uh, pivoting into creating masks. So mm -hmm. what's, what's next for people? So each individual is so different. Um, but no matter whether you're starting out or you're a huge corporation that's been in it for a while, this is the time for you to re-engage. 
So, so no matter if you have like 100 followers, understand what those 100 followers want. Ask them. Every time you ask them and you show up, by showing up every single day on social media, you will see your engagement double. You will see your audience double. Have a lead grab on there where it's a link to something, a landing page or a website page where you're giving people additional value so you can capture their emails and then continue to be that um, person who communicates to them through your value system. Um, but social media is beautiful right now because you have the largest captive audience that is not distracted in this moment. Well, distracted with Netflix, yes, but distracted, they're on social media. Um, we've seen the highest engagements on any, any posts that we've done in the last couple weeks because people need outlets. And so encouraging anyone at any level to be that outlet and be that solution um, is really important. Wow. Okay. So we, we, we have a huge opportunity of an, of, of an audience that is flocking to social media to, to, to engage and interact. What, so what should we be saying? What, but, all, but I think really important is what shouldn't we say mm. as a brand or a company? Cause I, I've seen some brands, companies, they've been really quick to send a letter from the CEO or something, but you've never heard from this company before. So all of a sudden it's coming out of the blue. It's not leaving a good taste in consumers' mouths. In my opinion, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. right? So I'm wondering what you think about this. So there is a, a fine line between disingenuous communication and true authentic emotional responses. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think this is a time to take your capitalist brain and put it aside. and. Mm -hmm. Foster that community brain. Understand that you are not greater than the individual that is part of your client base or your customer base. You are in servitude to them. So figuring out exactly what they need is in the only thing that's important. So I found it super beautiful when a CEO emailed saying, how can I support you to his mass audience? But it wasn't a fully legally written Dialogue right. is a simple, how can I support you? And that left a incredibly positive response in like my inner core and with all the other people that I communicated with about that note. Um, mm -hmm. It's integral that you distance yourself from trying to jump onto the bandwagon of Corona news. Here's updates. Here's negative, 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 negative. You need right. to hope. Now is when people need hope. So hopeful marketing is going to do exceptionally well because you're providing something that's positive to people. People will like thank you for it. They'll respect your business for it. And that, that's my perspective. <laughs> hope hopeful marketing, yeah. right? That's that's different. Mm -hmm. Now you you said some really encouraging things there, and I want to get to that in a second. For those of you that are just uh, continuing to join us here on LinkedIn Live, we're also on Eureka Hub's YouTube page live, and, and that recording will be up afterward. But thank you for those that are joining in on LinkedIn Live. I see Colin is there. Uh, nice to see you, Colin. Hi, Colin. We're speaking with Katrina Xavier, the, the CEO of Blitz Marketing and the founder of Embrace Your Alpha. And she just said something incredible which is to ditch your capitalist brain right now, embrace your community brain. And that's that's huge, right? So could you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. I think currently in the way everything is moving, if you go from it from a perspective of taking from others, when t people are depleted, people are demoralized, people are depressed, you cannot take anything because they have nothing to give you. But if you can support them and give, then when it comes time to take, they will reciprocate. They will give you back what you gave them. So it's just like a mirror right now. So if you can support someone through your business, do it. Because it will speak volumes to the people who are sitting at home, watching you be a leader and be a thought-provoking, positive inspiration for you. Awesome. Colin saying, I love that. Can we put it on a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You can have at it. <laughs> We're going to make that shirt, Colin. Um, awesome. So, 
Katrina, you, you were telling me a little bit about Embrace Your Alpha. And I'm, I'm curious to learn a little bit more about this because it, that does sound like one of those community oriented type projects, right? Mm -hmm. So Embrace Your Alpha um, was born out of just a pure passion. I truly loved communicating with people and helping them out of that that heaviness of life. Um, when people have that like that burden that they're carrying and they can't seem to put it down and allowing them to understand that it's a suitcase that you can put down and move away from is super important. So any outlet that I could create for them to be able to share, communicate, see value and see uh -huh. inspiration for what they couldn't themselves internally see um, was part of my element of like trying to contribute to this world that is so vast. I wanted to take moments um, and positive moments and see people who are doing incredible things and showcase that to a larger audience more than anything. That's, that's wonderful. Now you're, you're now part of sort of the Eureka family, mm -hmm. right? So tell, tell us about your, your journey um in inside of inside of eureka how you how you came across uh eureka and and uh, what your thoughts are of course so i met peter and i was enamored with everything that he wanted to create i thought it was phenomenal i love the approach to having a community within business within incubation within technology within all of the different spaces and bringing them together in this hub that they could collaborate um, and build beautiful moments, basically. Um, and how could you not adopt that vision and that value statement? Like, it's beautiful. Um, and I think it's an important thing in this current world that we have these opportunities where we can work together, we can collaborate, we can build on the fundamentals of being community-oriented people. Like, if we go back to historical data, we function better in groups not in our individual silos and the way the world is going, we're so individualized that it's beautiful to have spaces that you can come together in. That's great. So you're saying this is a part of our, our DNA naturally. Mm -hmm. I believe that even if a person says that they're in, an introvert, when someone else makes them feel good about themselves, they feel good. Mm -hmm. Just the opportunity to have people who make you feel good around you is sometimes a little limited because of what we choose or what we choose to allow. So being more open and positive to positive collaboration is integral, especially when we're stuck on these phones and in technology constantly where we're so isolated, even in current isolation with Corona. Um, we need to build upon that and be able to help each other. If you're a lawyer, you're an engineer and you're developing a new software, having them all come together to collaborate, to build something that's the next um, positive wavelength that takes over the entire tech sphere is important. Mm -hmm. And to foster that is super cool. So we got a question in from Paul. Paul, thanks for joining us. Paul Dara Fieve here. Um, do you guys talk about anything other than feel good stuff? And, and Paul, I, I replied pretty quickly with, with no. <laughs> um, well, and, and Paul, I love you. And so thank you so much for, for that, uh, for that comment. But I'm, I'm just, I'm not, we're not playing into that fear. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not, that's, it doesn't, I don't think that playing into fear is, is going to, is, is going to accomplish much. So, um, especially on a talk where we, you know, speaking about Eureka moments only, it's all about those breakthroughs, but the breakthroughs are sometimes rooted in a lot of pain. So mm -hmm. the pain that the world is feeling right now, Paul, and I'm, and I'm, you know, we've spoken offline too. And so, um, the pain that we're going through right now is going to breed a lot of new innovation and a lot of new hope. Um, so I'm focused on what's beyond the curve and the, the, what's, what's next, what's new, what's good, how mm -hmm. we can give. Um, and it sounds like you are too, Katrina. So, so for me, negativity and positivity are neutral. If you look at it, any, any energy will replicate, will have a domino effect. 
and it'll just magnify whatever the intention you're putting behind it. So if mm -hmm. you want more fear to be in your life, then put fear out there. It's neutral. If mm -hmm. you want more hope, then put more hope out there, then you're going to get more hope. So it's just whatever you want to put in your cup and fill it up to the brim, it's up to you. It's entirely your universe and your space that you're creating for yourself. So we're, we're sort of getting to the end of our show here and really, really grateful for this conversation um, on a, on a Thursday morning. It's, it's morning here in California, <laughs> but it's, it's afternoon. It's definitely morning. afternoon here. <laughs> So tell me about what's going on in your local community, how, how people are still, you know, are people still coming together, whether over Zoom or how, what's, what's been the continuity? So, so I found whenever I go to the grocery store or even remotely venture outside, people are a lot friendlier than they've ever been. People are craving that human connection. And so I've decided to create different opportunities to be able to connect with people that are important to me by creating uh, accountability circles. So I have one in the morning that is for working out, one in the afternoon that's for my book club, one in the evening that's about wine night and decompressing and letting go all of that angst and that internal drama, and then another one for business owners. It's creating these little hubs online where we can still share beautiful um, content back and forth and bring value to each other without having to be in a physical space with each other. Okay. Question, another comment from Paul. Thank you. I would, he wrote, I would feel really good if someone designed some collaborative software that allowed random individuals to do a group buy and for example, purchase items at wholesale prices. That would make me and lots of people feel really good. Paul, now you've got the right idea because mm -hmm. that is, that's an, an innovative lens to a unique problem. And if you don't build it, someone's going to build it. So if you want to talk about building it, I can, I can help uh, put, put together some of the right pieces for you. So Paul, thank you. That's, that's the kind of um, thinking I think we need. Katrina, Thank you. So the, Katrina Xavier, CEO, Blitz Marketing, founder, Embrace Your Alpha. Thank you for joining us on the Eureka Moments Only show. This is a live recording, podcast recording. This will be on all the major podcasting platforms. It's going to be on Eureka Hub's YouTube page. Is there anything that you'd like to share, any way for people to follow you? Any sort of last thoughts? Sure. Um, my handle on Instagram is Katrina7S. I uh, respond to all my DM requests and I communicate. So please do follow and interact with me. I would love to hear your story equally and your Eureka moments. Um, and uh, you can find Blitz Marketing at blitzmarketing.co. We're always available to help with any strategy that you need. We're here. Awesome. And final comment from Colin coming in. Staying positive is what works for me. I actually stopped watching the news weeks ago. Um, and this reminds me, um, what is it? Some, some good news. I'm just going to, I'm going to share this. I think it's just so cool. Uh, John, John Krasinski's good, the, some good news YouTube show. Mm. Wow. I can't actually find the channel. Um, but he played Jim in uh, The Office, and he started a YouTube channel called Some Good News, and all he's doing is just sharing positive news stories. He's not talking about coronavirus. And within, like, two videos, he's got, you know, a million subscribers and a couple million views. And so positivity can go viral right now, people. Oh, well, for sure. It's a magnet right now. People need it. It's a need and a solution. Positivity. Yep. Awesome. That's it. Make a funny face as we end the broadcast.